In May of 1945, the American 8th Air Force B-17s dropped food to the starving Dutch people. In September of 1944, the British had tried an assault on the bridges over the Rhine and this had failed. As part of that assault, the railroad workers went underground. In retaliation, the Germans denied the Dutch the use of the railroads, they imported German workers to run them, and they flooded the fields so that they couldn't grow food in western Holland. They destroyed the roads, bombed out the bridges, and the canals were mined so that there was no way to transport food. The Swedes and the Swiss tried to tr supply food by ship, but this was just too slow. So the Dutch government in exile appealed for help, and the 8th Air Force responded with 2,200 missions in April and May, dropping 4,200 tons of food to a starving population. Here is the drop zone on a bombed airfield. The the White Cross is the drop zone. There were 10 drop zones. Here's the navigator. They were to fly below 500 feet and in a narrow corridor in order to avoid being shot down. The navigator is a very important part of this operation. At this time, there was no GPS and no precision radar. The airplane's position was determined with a stopwatch and a compass. This is the crew of the 385th Bomb Group B-17 Possible Strait. Bill Varnado is in the front row on the left end. At the Great Ashfield base in the Midlands, B-17s were loaded with U.S. Army rations to be dropped to starving Dutch civilians. Some mission had to be scrubbed when German commanders were reluctant to negotiate a short armistice, guaranteeing planes safe passage on the mercy runs. RAF heavy bombers also engaged in these food dropping sorties. Here the airplanes are taxiing out for takeoff in the rain. It's a bad weather in England at the start of Operation Chowhound. They're going to take the turn and get in line to take off. And here they are going down the runway. You can see the runway lights ahead. arriving on the coast of Holland. Cross over at low altitude, less than 500 feet, and within this narrow defined corridor. You can see the flooded fields all across the land. And here's the food drop. You may ask, how was this done? A plywood floor was built in the bomb bay. It was hinged on one side and the other side attached to the bomb release mechanism. Food was piled on top of this floor. When you were over the drop zone, the bomb bay doors were opened and the bomb release pulled and this caused the plywood floor to fall away and the food came tumbling out. And another one on the other side. These Dutch home movies show how folks were living in the town receiving this food drop. There are children on the street, there are women on the street, but you don't see men and you don't see vehicles. The Germans had conscripted most of the Dutch men and taken them into Germany to work in the war factories. The railroads were now being run by Germans, imported to run the railroads and deny the Dutch the use of them in retaliation for their cooperation in Operation Market Basket.
Park. Young Hans Brinker hears something. It's the planes of the 8th Air Force. The people on the ground would wave dish towels at the airplanes. They would stand around the drop zones, and sometimes even in the drop zones. Here's a view from the airplanes to what the people look like on the ground waving. The folks on the ground are still living on the edge, but thanks to these men of the 8th Air Force, the children now have something to eat. And now it's back over the channel to England. Bill said that on one of the trips back there was a small Dutch boy standing on the dike right on the edge of the channel waving an American flag and the pilot acknowledged it by wigwagging the wings. The, the missions these aircraft flew were not without risk. Two aircraft were lost due to a collision and one due to an engine fire. Low altitude made recovery almost impossible. This shows damage caused by anti-aircraft fire from the Germans who didn't honor the truce. This is probably the last shot fired in the air war over Europe. Showing us the damage is co-pilot McCafferty of the Stork Club, a B-17 of the 385th Bomb Group. This certificate of appreciation was issued by Prince Bernhard to all the airmen that could be located who participated in Operation Chowhan Mana. This picture shows the dedication of a monument to the 8th Air Force. This was erected in the Netherlands in 2007. This is a commemorative souvenir from 1995 at a reunion of the alumni of the uh, Operation Chowhan. And this is our host. Bill Barnado telling us how it was. Thank you, Bill. He provided the video and the idea.